Hi everyone, it's Mrs McInnes here. Welcome to lesson six of our quadratics part two topic. So today we're going to be looking at something called the discriminant and this is all about the nature of the roots of our quadratic equations. So by nature of the roots, we're talking about how many roots and what kind of roots do we have. So we're going to look at this with an illustration first of all. So below we have three quadratic graphs and the only thing that's changed in each graph is the number at the end. So the first one's plus three, plus four, and then plus five. So the only thing that's changed is that number at the end. So this is the same parabola. It's just been moved up one unit each time. So we're going to look at our quadratic formula and look at the roots of each graph, first of all. So in each case, our A, B and C values have been written out for us and our quadratic formula has been filled in for us. So all we're going to do is kind of work our way through and look at the roots that we get for each case. So in this first one, we have X equals, so we've got minus, minus 4, so that becomes just a 4, plus minus. Inside the square root, minus 4 squared is 16. And then we have minus 4 times 1 times 3, so minus 12, divided by 2. So if we tidy this up, we have 16 minus 12 is 4. So we could take that one step further because 4 is a square number. So we'll have x equals 4 plus or minus, square root of 4 is 2. Out of a two. So if we go off and do 1 plus 1 minus, we're going to have 4 plus 2 divided by 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. And we're going to have 4 minus 2 over 2. So 4 minus 2 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, let's do the same with the middle example. So the only thing that's different here is that it's a 4 at the end instead of a 3. So the other values are all the same. So if we work through our quadratic formula here, minus minus 4, again, that's just 4, plus minus, so minus 4 squared, 16, and then minus 4 times 1 times 4 is, again, 16 over 2. So that actually becomes 4 plus or minus the square root of 0 divided by 2. So we would have 4 plus or minus nothing divided by 2. And then if we go off and do 1 plus 1 minus 4 plus 0 over 2, 4 plus nothing is 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then the same with the minus. So I'll just write it here. So 4 minus 0 divided by 2. So again, 4 minus 0 is still 4 divided by 2 is 2. The last one, the only thing that's different is that C is now a 5. So we have minus minus 4 becomes 4 plus or minus 16 minus 4 times 1 times 5 is 20 over 2. So that gives us 4 plus or minus the square root of minus 4 over 2. Now, Minus 4 inside the square root, that is mathematically impossible. So there are no answers for this. Okay, can't do that. So if we now look a bit more closely at these three examples. Okay. In the first example, the number inside our square root was a positive number, so we had four, a number greater than zero. And we got two different roots here. So we've got two points where this graph crosses the x-axis. In the middle example, our number inside our square root was zero. And we got the same answer twice, so we got just one answer of two. And in the last example, we had a negative number inside the square root, which means we have no answers. So there are no roots. This parabola does not cross the x-axis. There are no answers for that. So using that information, this will give us the nature of the roots based on the number inside your square root. So in each equation, 
Only the C value changed, but the roots were all different. So this is the point of what we're looking at today, is that the nature of your roots is determined purely by the part of the formula inside the square root. So that B squared minus 4AC section, depending on what number you get in your square root, will tell you what kind of roots you have. So whether you have 2, 1 or 0. So in that first equation, the number in the square root was a 4, so greater than 0. And we had two different roots. So what we would say is two unequal or two distinct roots, two different roots. In the middle example, we had a 0 in our square root. And we just got one answer. So we would either say two equal roots or you could say one repeated root. The last equation, we got a negative number in the square root, which means we have no roots. We have no answers for that, so there are no roots. So this b squared minus 4ac, that is what's called the discriminant. Okay. Now this part in the grey box is really important and you will have to kind of learn that, uh, learn these different conditions off by heart. So, like I said, if it's greater than zero, you have two real and distinct roots. If it is equal to zero, we have either two real equal roots or one real repeated root. And if it's less than zero, you have no roots. So, remembering that your graphs could be um, either way around, this last box on the page is just an illustration for you of... Um, examples of the different kinds of roots. So in the first one, we have um, two real and distinct roots. So your graph could be either way around. You've still got two points, two kind of marks there and there, or there and there. Two roots, two different roots. Um, if it's equal to zero, you just get one root. So your graph could be either way round, but you're still just going to get one root touching the x-axis. So um, you can say two real and equal roots, or you can say one real repeated root. It's up to you what you want to say. I'm going to go with one real repeated root. That's the wording that I'm going to choose um, to use. So one real repeated root. You could also say two real equal roots. I don't mind which one you use, but I'm going to use one real repeated root. And then if your graph is kind of floating up in midair, either um, a U shape or an N shape, uh, there are no roots. So no real roots. Every time you must use the word real if you just say no roots, you don't get your marks. It has to have the word real in there. Real is just, we mean a real number. So it's just a type of number. So I would really like you to memorise two real and distinct roots, one real repeated root, and no real roots. That's the three that I would like you to memorise. So let's try a couple examples. This is really straightforward. It's much quicker than doing your um, full quadratic formula. It is just part of the, the formula. So there's just a wee note at the top there. If b squared minus 4ac gives you a perfect square number, your roots are going to be rational numbers. So um, for example, when we had root 4 in the first illustration, square root of 4 is 2. So we got um, rational numbers for our roots. We got 1 and 3. If b squared minus 4ac is not a perfect square, you're going to get um, irrational numbers for your roots, so thirds. So you might end up with something like root 2 as a, as a root. It just means an irrational number as your root, but that's fine. So anytime the question asks you about the nature of the roots, you're using the discriminant. So that's another kind of key word to look for in questions. Nature of the roots is discriminant. So let's do a few examples. The question says, find the discriminant and state the nature of the roots. So we're going to start off the same way we do with quadratic formulas. So we're going to write out A, B and C. So in this first example here, we have X squared minus 6X plus 9. So we've got 1 for A, minus 6 for B, 9 for C. 
all we need to do is b squared minus 4ac. It's not the whole quadratic formula, it's just the bit in the square root. So b squared minus 4ac. So minus 30, eh, sorry, minus 6. I'm going ahead with the answers here. Minus 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9, if you plug in your values. So minus 6 squared is 36. And then 4 times 1 times 9 is also 36 which gives me zero. So the wording for your answer has to be very specific. This is exactly what I would want you to write. Since b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, there is one real repeated root. Let's try our next example. So again, we'll write out A, B and C. So in this case, your A value is 2, B is minus 4 and C is 5. So B squared minus 4AC will give us minus 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. So that's 16 minus 40 which is minus 24. So this time we have a negative. So a statement will be since b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, there are no real roots. Okay, the last one, we have x squared minus four equals seven x. Before you pick out your A, B and C values, you need everything on the left hand side and equal zero on the right. So we just need to rearrange this first. So x squared, bring the 7x across, it'd be minus 7x minus 4 equals zero. So A, B and C values, we've got 1, minus 7 and minus 4. So B squared minus 4AC is minus 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 4. So we get 49 minus minus 16 because it's minus 4 times 1 times minus 4. So we'll change that to plus 16. So 49 plus 16 is 65. So you can guess the last one. We've done all three now because this is greater than zero. So since b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, there are two real and distinct roots. Okay, you could say real and unequal as well. That wording is also okay. So, the questions I would like to try today are these ones here. So, from page 14, I want you to do the first column from question 1 and 2. And then question 3, I want you to do A, B, C and D. Okay, so question 1 and 2 kind of go together. So, you can kind of do them at the same time as you go through. Um, you see what I mean by the wording of the question. And then question 3 just A, B, C and D would be fine for today, okay? So any questions, please come on the Teams page and ask for help. The, these questions are very simple to do today, very straightforward. So I think you should all be fine. Um, but please make sure you use the correct wording. So we're looking at two real and distinct roots, one real repeated root or no real roots. Your wording has to be really spot on today, guys. This is very specific um, in terms of um, getting the marks in any assessments you need the correct wording okay please as usual mark your work from the back and email it across to me so I can check how you're getting on and I will speak to you in the next video thanks guys see you soon bye